Okay, uh, today we will talk about spectrum and antenna design parameters. We are already aware that there is a frequency spectrum whose wavelength spans from 10 femtometer to 10 meter and in terms of frequency it can be termed as radio waves, microwaves, terahertz, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays. These are already known to uh, most of the people. Now, be the microwave frequency spectrum is saturated. So, new research is going to happen in terahertz frequency gap. The terahertz frequency gap falls in between 100 gigahertz to 10 terahertz. So, this is a coming up band where almost all communication devices, maybe you can say 6G communication devices will operate. This is terahertz frequency range. Now, for uh, simplicity, I can say the L band lies between 1 to 2 gigahertz, that is microwave frequency band. The S band lies between 2 to 4 gigahertz, C band falls between 4 to 8 gigahertz, X band falls between 8 to 12 kilohertz, KU band falls in 12 to 18 gigahertz, K band falls in 18 to 26 gigahertz. K, A, uh, K band falls in 26 to 40 gigahertz. So, most of these frequency bands are being occupied and a lot of congestion is taking place. So, now designer need to switch in a frequency spectrum that is 10 raised to the power 12 or you can say 100 gigahertz to 10 terahertz. Now, the advantage of using uh, dielectric resonator antennas or dielectric material at 10 terahertz or 100 gigahertz to 10 terahertz that it has stable configuration. It has three dimensions because of three dimensions and in material characterization there are uh, 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 permittivity available from 10 to 1600. It means you can uh, choose any particular material such as graphene, graphite, uh, then uh, carbon nanotubes, these are available uh, to operate at terahertz frequency band. The advantage to operate at terahertz uh, frequency band will be the uh, bandwidth will be huge, the size of device will be compact, the speed of operation uh, you are going to achieve very huge. So, various advantages are there to operate in terahertz band. Now, lot of IoT devices are sensors are required when we talk about uh, smart city, smart houses and smart healthcare. Now, we already aware that there are sensor uh, which operate either as uh, uh, ultrasound frequency or using acoustic uh, frequency or using infrasound frequencies. We have devised a device for uh, animal scarer using infrared uh, frequency and we have also devised one uh, animal scarer using uh, ultrasonic frequency. S for example, I narrate that there are uh, animals which has uh, hearing capability below uh, 20 hertz. There are few animals which has capability to hear uh, beyond 20 kilohertz. Generally, the human being has a frequency hearing capability from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So, if we can use a spectrum out of this particular frequency band 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, then we will be able to devise uh, the electronic devices which will not be audible to human being, but will be audible to that particular species. So, uh, Similar to the acoustic, uh, uh, acoustic signals which can uh, create noise to these particular uh, species or animals, they will be scared. 
and uh, we do not want to harm any animal but only the thing is that there should not be any human and animal conflict to avoid that we are targeting to device electronic devices that they can either operate beyond 20 kilos or they can operate beyond uh, below 20 kilos one example to operate uh, below 20 hertz is uh, the pigeon pigeon has capability to hear uh, the lower frequencies which fast below 20 hertz so we have uh, developed a electronic device which can generate 15 hertz 16 hertz 17 hertz or 18 hertz of frequency and then depending on the noise level generally we keep the noise level uh, below 60 db so that it does not harm to any specific but it creates some sort of noise unwanted noise and because of that noise in a particular area they will try to go away from that so it is only a scarer not the harmful uh, we are not creating any harm to the uh, wildlife or species similarly we have devised one more electronic device which operate at, at 25 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz, 35 kilohertz. This is specifically designed for monkeys. Uh, reason being the monkeys, monkey species has capability to hear uh, from 20 hertz to uh, 40 kilohertz. So taking frequency of 25 kilohertz or 30 kilohertz or 35 kilohertz and at a uh, uh, SPL, specific power level or sound pressure level uh, to keeping it uh, to 60 dB, we are making a environment of noisy environment so that the species uh, go away from that. Or we can say it is nothing but a radio wave uh, fencing. It is not visible but it creates a, a, a sound of that particular level which become unwanted to this particular species and generally these species go away from this particular zone. So these devices, uh, how it is being developed? We have used ESP32. With the help of ESP32, we are able to control a delay of timer and the timer control delay will generate a frequency. The ESP32 frequency is very low in amplitude. So we use PAM amplifiers to amplify the, the sound or uh, PWM signal being generated by ESP32 and these ESP32 uh, frequencies are programmable. Depending on the program which we can generate, we can uh, generate random configuration, we can generate a particular uh, frequency spot and these uh, signals at PAM can further be amplified by using some sort of amplifiers uh, and these amplifiers can be directed using piezo, tra piezo transducers. So, we can artificially, we can generate a radio wave uh, fencing and this fencing will control these animal scarer to a, and, uh, to a protected space and these spaces, uh, these spaces can be used for human friendly applications. So this way uh, by making use of these electronic devices based on particular frequency, we will be able to avoid human animal in, uh, conflict. So these are very useful devices. Further research is required in this area so that uh, uh, hum human as well as animal friendly devices can be generated and by devising this type of devices we will be able to control human uh, animal conflict. With this I conclude today's lecture. Thank you.